The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you most solemnly, anything you ask for from my Father, he will grant in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and so your joy will be complete. I have been telling you all this in metaphors. The hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in metaphors but tell you about the Father in plain words. When that day comes, you will ask in my name. And I do not say that I shall pray to the Father for you, because the Father himself loves you for loving me and believing that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I leave the world to go to the Father. The Gospel the good news of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to have fun this morning. Fun with the word of God. We have come to Eucharist and we eat at the table of the word. And as we eat at the table of the word, we ought to come with a, a disposition to the word of God. And that's why I say we're going to have fun. You know, you have fun with family and friends, and you have fun in the environment, and you have fun at the beach, but I have reached a stage in my own life where I have fun with God's Word, a sort of intimacy with the Word, a sort of love for the Word, and I go to the Word with that intimacy, intimacy and that love, and I'm revived and refreshed, just as you go to the beach. You go out on a picnic, you go out with friends and family, and you are refreshed. God's Word will refresh us. And then when we talk about having fun with the Word of God, you don't come to the Word with, with dreary hearts. You come to the Word with an open heart. And so when I went to the Word with an open heart last night, there's a particular verse of today's gospel that jumps out at me. And it is this, until now, you have not asked for anything in my name, until now. And Jesus is addressing his disciples. He is addressing people who followed him. In other words, there is more that God is expecting of the disciples. There is more that Jesus is expecting of his disciples. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. So there is an expectation because the next verse goes on. Ask and you'll receive and so your joy will be complete. There's something else that the Lord, Jesus, the master, is going to ask of them. He continues, I have been telling you all this in metaphors. The hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in metaphors, but tell you about the Father in plain words. Asking more. Not speaking them in metaphors, but in plain language. I want us to ponder that this morning. Because sometimes in our lives, we are not prepared as a certain bank says, to go the distance. You know that bank goes the distance with us? We need to go the distance with the Lord. And that's what, what spirituality is. is that intimacy with Christ Jesus, Christian spirituality is that intimacy with Christ Jesus, that love of Christ Jesus, that we are drawn into the Father. We are drawn into God. And there must be that, that openness to say, God, you want something more of me. God, you want something else of me. That's why I say we're going to have fun with the word this morning. And that ought not to be frightening. 
it is said that there are 365 days of the year. Correct? Am I correct? Right. And it is also said that in Scripture, 365 times you hear the words, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. God is saying through his word, do not be afraid. I will provide you with that courage for every day of the year. I will provide you with the courage and the strength and the bravery and the grace. I will provide you with my spirit so that when you dare to ask, Lord, what else do you want of me? That God provides you with the resources. And that's the fun. That God does not leave us stagnant. God does not leave us marking time. God is always asking something more of us. Not because God is sick. But because God wants the best for us. God wants our salvation. God wants that we see his face. And that's the power of God's word this morning. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive. Go a little further. There's some unfinished business. There's some things that are left undone. As Christians, we have to be straight up with God. And God is straight up with us. To so say, Lord, yes, I know that there are some things left undone in my life. There is some unfinished business in my life. And those verses, until now you have not asked for anything, go a little further. Ask for it in my name. Go a little further because I have been telling you all this in metaphors. The hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in metaphors. I shall speak to you in plain words. Go a little further. Come nearer. I'm saying to you, all those in the chapel this morning, the four of you, and... Uh, the thousands joining us through Trinity or on the internet. Come a little closer to the Lord. There is unfinished business that the Lord has to do with you and with me. And therefore, I want to introduce two words to this homily. One word is journey. And the other word is engagement. Let's talk about journey. Because we have a famous man who was on a journey. In the first reading, we hear about Paul. Paul came down to Antioch. The last line of, of, the, of the first reading goes like this. And the energetic way, when he arrived there, he was able by God's grace, to help the believers considerably. By the energetic way, he refuted the Jews in public and demonstrated from the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. Uh-huh. Paul? Paul who persecuted? Paul who persecuted the Christians? In an energetic way, he is demonstrating from the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ, that Jesus was the Messiah, Paul made a journey. And we must be prepared to make that journey, to make that journey with the Lord and not be content with marking time but asking the Lord, Lord, what else are you asking of me? What do you want of me? That we plumb the depths. That we grow closer to the Lord and the Lord grow, grow closer to us. That we draw closer to God and God draws closer to us. That is the intimacy. That is the fun that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore the other word is engagement. Sometimes uh, we really don't engage the Lord. Mary engaged the angel. 
But how can this come about since I'm a virgin? One of the saddest, saddest lines of Scripture is in Mark's Gospel when Jesus said to the rich young man, go and sell all that you have, give your money to the poor, and then come and follow me. And he did not engage Christ. The Scripture says he walked away. Many times we walk away from the Lord without walking away. Many times we are just not engaged in the Lord, not allowing God's word to touch our hearts. There's no engagement. Jesus told Zacchaeus, come down, I must be in your house today. Jesus wanted to engage Zacchaeus. Paul was engaged on the road to Damascus. And so it is, in, it is in that journey we are prepared to make that journey through constant engagement with Christ. I always say to people, listen, Christianity is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And sometimes marathons are hard. It's a long journey. It's painful. You're dehydrated. You're tired. Your, your, your legs are feel like, like rubber. But we must be prepared to engage it. Engage the sorrow and the joy, the light and the darkness. Engage with Jesus Christ. Because there is something more that he may be asking of you. I go back to it. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. There's still unfinished business. You still have to do something else. And that, that doing something else, that discovery of something else, that's your wow moment, your eureka moment, the aha moment of your life. is a moment of peace in your life. That you say, yes, God, you are asking something else of me. And, and this engagement is not momentary. Eh? It's, it's, it's a process. It's always it's having a prayer chair in your homes. And spending time with God. It's going to the blessed sacrament and spending time with God. It's engaging the rosary. Engaging Christ in the rosary. It's, 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 it's fasting. Engaging the Lord is, is silence. Engaging the Lord is going on a, a social media fast. Engaging the Lord is going on a pilgrimage. And really allowing God to speak to your heart. Because you know that you are not perfect and I know I am not perfect. And God has something else to do in your life and my life. One of the greatest things is to say, Lord, I'm not perfect. I am unfinished and you have to finish me. You know they talk about finishing school? Well, the... People have to go, many Christians have to go to finish in school. But God can, can mold us. I always say, you see me, Matthew, Matthew, Anthony, Jude, Dero, Matthew, you are on an unpolished diamond. I rough on the edges. I know that. I know I rough, 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 rough on the edges. You need some sandpaper to grind me down. And that's the word of God. The word of God and grace is to grind you down, that you engage the Lord, you stay with the Lord in love. All the married people listening to this, all mothers and fathers listening to this, you know how you stay with your spouses in love or you have stayed with your children in love. And that's what we do with the Lord. We stay with the Lord in love because we're on a journey and we are constantly engaging God on this journey. God is constantly engaging us. Remember Jacob and the angel? Remember Jacob and the angel? He fought with the angel. And that's the beauty of relationship. That we are in deep relationship with Christ. That we stay with the Lord and we engage the Lord. We don't walk away. And so I want to end this homily this morning 
by asking young men and young women to engage your Lord. Engage your Lord in asking, what do you want of me? What else do you want of me? And by the way, I'm vocations director for the Archdiocese. So I, 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 have, to, I have to put in this somehow. That at the end of the day, yes, I went to school, I went to secondary school, I went to UTT, I went to UWE, I went abroad to university. And can we dare ask, as young professionals, or, or young men or young women in UWE, or coming out of, of school, of O levels or A levels, Lord God, what are you asking of me? What is the other piece in the puzzle? Because there are other little pieces in the puzzle. God's will may, may be that other little piece in the puzzle. And so, get in touch with us at called at catholictt.org. Called, C-A-L-L-E-D, at catholictt.org. Send us an email so that you can begin that process of engagement, that we engage in the Lord. And I'm saying to parents and grandparents, allow your children, your sons and daughters, your grandsons and granddaughters to engage the Lord. You see, COVID-19, one of the things that are important is family prayer. And you may want to start, I know it may be pulling teeth, I know that, I'm not naive, but if families can get together and do Lexio together and do novenas together, family novenas together, family rosaries together, and together as a family, you engage the Lord. And that you allow, allow your sons and daughters, grandsons and granddaughters to ask the question, the brave question, Lord, what do you want of me? What else do you want of me? Up until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Up until now, there's something else you have to do. So all of you viewing, what else God may be asking of you? All of us in the chapel this morning, what else God may be asking of you? And it may be specific or it may be general. This specific one will require the deeper engagement and the general one we all know. God is asking our sanctification. God is asking holiness. God is asking of us prayer. God wants us to be with him in prayer. That's the starting point. God wants us to gaze upon him and see his face. That's the starting point. That God wants you for God's self, for himself. Because he loves you with an everlasting love. May that grace be upon you, upon me, and all of you who are listening. God loves you with an everlasting love, and he wants to ask more of you. And this more is that engagement with him, not walking away. Don't walk away from the Lord. Amen.